I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. You're watching Your View. Thank you for joining us. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 AM. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. It is a Wednesday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. And we broadcast from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. SevenMileCasino.com is the website. And Seven Mile Casino is only a few minutes south of downtown San Diego on the beautiful Chula Vista Bay. And to make things even better with blackjack over here and poker over here and a great spot to watch college football on Saturdays and NFL football on Sundays, It's only been made better at Seven Mile Casino now because Sammy's Woodfire Pizza and Grill is now Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, and it is inside Seven Mile Casino. So you got great card games. um, you got a great view. You've got an incredible restaurant. It's all happening in the same place. It's at Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. By the way, for those of you that are watching on television tonight on Channel 4 San Diego, or those of you that are watching on YouTube right now, me and Brown are connected yesterday afternoon because Grande, um, in the middle of the Mm -hmm. day yesterday, my daughter's uh, college soccer team, she's playing at Mesa College. uh, They had a game in the middle of the day. I got to the game at halftime. Score was already 2-0 in favor of Mesa. My daughter scored both goals. I didn't see either one of them. Nice. Um, But but after the game was over, they won 4-1, beating Palomar. Browner and I connected at the Chick-fil-A right nearby, right nearby the Mesa campus. And that's where Browner handed off to me this brand new seven mile casino sign, the one that I've got behind me and the one that he's got behind him. And then he gave me the seven mile casino sign and I gave him a number one. I was gonna say, did y'all share a meal? Mm -hmm. We didn't share one, but I gave him what, what Browner? Don't say it like that. What? Don't say it like that. You gave me a number one meal. You didn't give me a number one. You gave me a number one meal. Well, I said to him, I texted him, I go, hey, I'm at Chick-fil-A. I know this is our meeting spot. Yeah. Would you like anything? And he said, yeah. He said, I'll take a number one. So now I get up there and I, and this is kind of a weird Chick-fil-A because it's like a, it, drive you don't only, well, it's a drive through. Oh, this is the one off Balboa. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, and you can walk up to it. Right. So you can't walk really in have a dining hall, right? You don't walk in, but on the outside, it's kind of like a, it's a drive through like for checkers. people on foot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I go up and I, I start talking to this lady and I'm like, yeah, hi, I'd like this. That I go and I'd like a number one. And she said, well, do you want the number one, just the plain Chick-fil-A sandwich or, or do you spicy. want spicy? Or, right. And Browner did not specify that he wanted spicy. So I just decided to go with regular. And then uh-huh. he also didn't specify what particular beverage he would prefer. Oh, come on. So now if, if, if again, he didn't specify. So it was up to me. What what drink should I get him? What do you think I got him? Well, I would know what I would get him for a drink. It's the most obvious answer in the world. It's the Coke. But you probably got him like, I don't know, water, Powerade, <laughs> something healthy. Nope. 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 Diet, diet, Dr. Pepper. Nope. But you see, close. You're, cl- you're close. See, I Dr. got him. Pepper. I got him a regular Dr. Pepper. Now, Browner, did yeah. I do the right thing? Would you have preferred a Coke? Or because you, you didn't specify. So I thought you're leaving it up to me under the assumption that I know what you would want. And I did thought he, you would want a Dr. Pepper. Was he correct on both on both options? Well, I mean, I would like some cheese on my sandwich, but you know, I understand his family. Well, that's not really a number like one. Give people cheese, but wait, what? What I don't mind. Wait, you wanted cheese on the sandwich or Coke? Wait, you wanted you wanted cheese on the sandwich, but what? I understand that in your family, you guys don't like to get cheese. What are you talking about? We don't like to get cheese because you tell the famous story about your dad. Put it on at home. Cheese on the burger. Oh yeah, 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 but <laughs> no, but you said a number one. You didn't say like a number one with cheese and a Coke. Right. You said a number one. You didn't give me enough specific. So I just got him a regular Chick-fil-A sandwich, the fries, which actually looked really good. I didn't have any fries. And I got him a Dr. Pepper and I handed it off to him. Did I do a good job? Yeah, man. It was a nice gesture. You didn't have to do that. It was a very nice gesture of you. So I didn't want to burden you with specifics of what I was like. I just have one of the chicken sandwich and you and you and you oblige. And I'm Can you tell me your, thank you for that. I'm confused by your Chick-fil-A order because the number one doesn't have cheese. So do you go number one add cheese? Whatever I just look up there and I pick the one that have cheese. Listen, y'all so you do I'm the a, Popeyes you do the deluxe man, one? Okay? You do the Listen, deluxe one with lettuce and tomato? Mm-hmm. I'm a Popeyes man. I don't know what the Chick-fil-A menu looks like, okay? I'm a Popeyes, Popeyes man. Popeyes don't have chicken. I mean cheese. Uh, I don't usually get cheese on my chicken. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm confused. Man. I know, me too. You got me really confused. But here's what I did. I have to admit what I ate yesterday, and it's just probably better that I just admit it out loud. Um, 
So I no really carbs, do, no carbs. No, no, I, I have carbs, but just before 3 p.m. And I've started doing this intermittent fasting where I don't eat until like 1230 in the afternoon. And then I stop eating before 8 p.m. Um, and so I had uh, I admit this. I had um, two spicy chicken deluxe sandwiches. Mm, you know, and I didn't want I didn't want French fries and I didn't want soda. What's so I had problem? like I, I had an unsweetened iced tea because I didn't need all yeah. the sugar of the soda. And I, by the way, there's no flavor whatsoever. Yeah, I was just, you, why are you? No, just get water why? at that point. Because I, yeah. I was looking for a little caffeine. That's why. Um, okay. So I had two spicy chicken deluxe sandwiches. And let me tell you something right now. I would eat the exact same thing today. They were <laughs> effing bomb, dude. The spicy chicken deluxe sandwich with the pepper jack cheese and the lettuce and tomato and the pickles on a on a Chick Fil A sandwich, dude, it's bomb. It is. I'm a Popeye talk, guy, man. Talk to me about sauces. At your no point. sauces. I'm sauce free. Oh, is wow. that because of your diet? No, just I don't. I don't want the sauces. I don't need it. I've right. seen a TikTok hack that I need to implement in my life next time I go to Chick Fil A. When you just get a spicy chicken sandwich, mm -hmm. you know it comes in that aluminum bag or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you take out the sandwich, get the chicken throw it back in the bag, throw buffalo sauce and ranch, shake it up, and then put it back in your sandwich. And it's like pre-mixed. It looked amazing. Well, that sounds good. We should do that. Yeah, we should definitely do that today. Yeah. My fiance called me yesterday. Yeah, you want Chick-fil-A for dinner? I'm like, no, I don't, actually. It just didn't sound good yesterday. But now, right now, at this moment, yeah, sounds fantastic. Sounds bomb. I know. Yeah. I, I read the exact same thing today. I don't need the fries. I don't need all those fried carbs. I would just take the sandwich. Just give me two sandwiches rather than the fries. Mm, it sounds suspicious to me. What do you mean? Well, who, can, who eats a burger without fries? Yeah, dude, I'm, I can't do that. What? I can't. It's not a I have a hard. I have a hard time eating a sandwich without chips. Like, wait a minute, wait. It's not a burger. Wait, it's in between a bun. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's a burger. It's a chicken sandwich. All right. Same what? Theory. What? what? Wait, wait, is a problem? Bro. It's the same thing, bro. It's the same thing. What are you doing here? Do you, you mean to tell me you can't have a sandwich without chips? Like when I go to Jersey Mike's, as an example. Right. Oh, I always get a small bag of chips. Oh, no, I don't get Every time. Chips. I don't get Every chips time. at Jersey Mike's. Any I can sandwich. go a sandwich without soda. I can do a meal without soda. I can, you know, I can just do water, whatever. But for with a, if I'm going to get a burger, uh, even if it's in and out with their crap fries. Terrible. Got to get the fries. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Problem with and me. And if I get a sandwich, mm -hmm. if I go to like here in North Park, if I go to like Fat Boys or something, like. I gotta grab a small bag of chips at least. Yeah, need some crunch in my life. Yeah, see if I um if I go to In and Out, chances are I'm probably gonna be eating in my car, and the fries are fine. But I really love their animal fries, which is another thing that I should not be eating right now at this stage of my life. But I will tell you this: um, you can't eat animal fries while you're driving. That's forget it. That can't. You're happen. avoiding the question, fries. sir. You're avoiding the question. What is the problem? What, what, what Why question? don't you like chips with your sandwiches? Oh, I do. I like chips, and I'll take a Dorito and put it on a sandwich. I'll take a really good kettle chip and put it on a sandwich. I like a nice crunch for a sandwich. But when mm -hmm. I have a chicken sandwich from Chick Fil A and I've got lettuce and tomato and pickles on it, that satisfies my crunchy need. I don't need chips on the sandwich. Now, if I go to if I go to Jersey Mike's and I got that lettuce and I got onions and jalapenos and I got tomatoes, again, there's crunchiness to it. I don't need to put a chip on it. But certain sandwiches that don't have any crunch of any kind, that's where I would like to take some chips and put them on the sandwich. But it's not an everything. It's not an everyday occurrence for me. It's kind of a rarity, frankly. All right. All right. All right. I just wanted to clean it up because I thought yeah. he was avoiding that question. No, I wasn't avoiding the question. Hey, look, I'm going to switch uh, topics here and I'm going to jump into some baseball stuff from last night. Um, actually, I'm going to switch into some baseball stuff coming up tonight between the Dodgers and the Cardinals. But I do want to say, you know, since we're talking about diet and everything um, and since I had to, I, it almost was like for me, I needed to tell somebody. Like I didn't tell any of my kids. I didn't tell my girlfriend. I literally did not. It was like a, it was like a secret yesterday, like closet eating. I ate two Chick-fil-A sandwiches, okay? I'm saying it out loud. I did it. But I also want to say this to everybody. You know, that's not an everyday deal, and I want everybody to be healthy like I'm trying to be healthy. You know, look, I'm 50-plus now, you know? And um, and when you get to 40, it, it's like your testosterone levels, for, for many of us, our testosterone levels drop. And when our testosterone levels drop, we, as guys, could have lots of other health-related problems. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. Fellas, look, I want you to call iThriveMD, and I want you to make an appointment. I'm going to give you a phone number, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. I'm also going to give you a website. It's iThriveMD.com slash Kaplan, K-A-P-L-A-N. 
ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan. And the reason I'm giving you their website is because I was talking to Dr. Samir Damani earlier today, and you know, they're keeping track of everything. They're finding out how many calls are coming in, how many uh, visits are to their website. And I've told them, I go, I'm actually not doing a good job of promoting the website, ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan. I've been telling everybody come to our website, kaplanandcrew.com and click on the link. Now it will take you there, but go to ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan. And here's one of the other things, you know, we're in a competition. I don't know if you guys realize this or not. When we did this deal with ithrivemd, um, it was us and it was Dave Rickards from Dave Shelley and Chainsaw, which is the longstanding rock and roll morning show of San Diego. And so when I worked with Dr. Damani, I wanted to get him on with us and I wanted to get him on with Dave Rickards. Well, the stats are coming in and I'll just say right now, Dave is beating us. I hate to admit it, but Dave is beating us. In other words, there have been more of Dave's listeners sign up or, or make appointments at iThriveMD than there have been great friends making appointments at iThriveMD. So look, guys, I want you to be healthy like I want to be healthy. I want you to be energetic like I want to be energetic. I was taking testosterone forever, but now I've added NAD injections into what I'm taking. And I'll tell you this, the, the results have been so far not only more energy, but they told me at iThriveMD, you'll probably see that your body will lean out some from the NAD injections. And I take them every other day, and I've only been doing it about two weeks. And I, I don't know, either I'm lying to myself or I'm really seeing that I am leaning out a bit through the NAD injections. And Alex, I thought it was pretty interesting talking to Phil Davis, the Bellator fighter. This was, what's today? Today's Wednesday. This was yesterday, wasn't it? We talked yeah. to Phil. Mm -hmm. I, I thought listening to Phil, cause I was saying as you're older, you need, you know, testosterone or NAD. And Phil was like, dude, I'm 37. But when you're training like a beast and you're working really hard in the gym and you get to this point where your body is just so tired that you might get sick. He's like, the NAD does so much for my energy and for my training. So look, you may not be training to fight in a Bellator fight, but you are training to live every day. And I would just encourage everybody who's listening and everybody who's watching, go to that website, ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan, or here's the phone number, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. Guys, make an appointment now with San Diego's leading anti-aging and performance optimization clinic. That's ithrivemd. And help me, by the way, beat Dave Rickards from Dave from, from DSC. Dave Shelley and Chainsaw, um, the great friends got to step up because right now they're leading the way and I don't want to lose to those guys. You understand what I'm saying? Damn right. I can't, I can't, I can't possibly fathom not winning this competition. You know, I didn't know it was a competition. Now I care. Yeah, Me it wasn't, it, it wasn't necessarily intended to be a competition until but we're turning it into one until Dr. Damani. Well, I put the whole deal together. Like I literally said to him, look, we're going to do, we're going to do stuff on Kaplan and crew on radio and TV and, mm -hmm. and YouTube and everything else. I go, and then I'm also going to get you on with another show that is male dominated audience so that you have the most success you can have. And he's like, that sounds like a great game plan. So I went to Dave Rickards and I said, Dave, I want you to meet Dr. Damani, go to the clinic, um, get involved with what they do. And, and then I want you to sell it to your audience. And I know we share a lot of the same audience and Dave's like, this is a great idea. And I'm really into this stuff already. And so Dave has gone and he's become a, a patient, a client, and he's been talking about it on the radio, but not as much as we are. He's not interviewing Dr. Damani or interviewing an MMA fighter, you know? And so I just want to say to all the guys out there, um, this has turned into a competition. If, if we were leading, it wouldn't be a competition, but they're leading. So it now is. So go <laughs> look us up. Yeah. This is so good for the show, and it's so good for you. And I encourage all the guys out there to make an appointment. I thrive MD. Scott look bad. Yeah, you're making me look like an a-hole, frankly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thrive MD.com slash Kaplan. Guys, make an appointment and let me know how things are going. Okay. All right. Let's talk about a little bit of uh, what's coming up later on this afternoon here. What do you guys think about the one game wild card? The Dodgers won 106 games this year, and they find themselves not winning the division. And in a one game wild card situation. And look, I know a lot of Dodger fans feel confident. We got Max Scherzer. Isn't that interesting? The guy who's your number one pitcher is the guy who you went and got during the all star or during the trade deadline. Yeah. Um, it's not Kershaw. It's not Urias. It's not Bueller. 
it's Scherzer. And on the other side, you got Adam Wainwright, who's a 40-year-old guy, but still a great pitcher. And if you look at the history, and what does the history really mean? Because these two teams, you know, didn't have these players. But historically speaking, the the St. Louis Cardinals have owned the Dodgers in the postseason. I think they've met six times total, and St. Louis has won five of those six meetings, uh, meaning not just one game playoffs, but the entire series. So I'll throw it to you guys. What what do you think? The the Yankees get eliminated last night because there was only yeah. one game. Somebody's going home tonight because it's only one game. Do you like it like this? Or would I don't you- have like you guys know I don't yell or, or have strong opinions about many many things like like where I'm adamant about this. This is baseball's dumbest rule. This is the dumbest thing, and this is worse than having two separate sets of rules with DH non DH. This is the worst dumbest thing the baseball that baseball does, and that's saying something because baseball does a lot of things wrong. But to to play 162 games, and not only that. Last year, when you expanded the playoffs, you saw how successful this three-game series was. You know, that that format they implemented last season? What are we doing here? Baseball is built on series. You don't play individual games ever in baseball. Ever. You play a two-game series minimum. And you can't get these guys to play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, wherever. Like, it, all three in L.A. Who cares? That's your advantage for, for, winning, for winning more games. This is the dumbest thing baseball does. It makes no sense to me why they continue to do one game playoffs. One game. You play 162 to play one? One. It's dumb. I mean, look, if this were the NFL, every Sunday or Monday or Thursday, every week you play one game. That's it. It's one game. When you go into the into the wild card round, it's one game. The divisional round, one game. The championship round, one game. The Super Bowl, one game. That's football. It's one game. In hockey, You play all season long, one game each night, and then you get into a series. You know, in basketball, you play one game against this team, you move on to play the next team. But then you get to the postseason, and prior to their whole play-in situation, it was a series. Baseball is a – look, the Padres played the Angels in a two-game series, but mostly they play the Giants in three or the Dodgers in four. Most series in baseball during the regular season are three games. Why would you have a three-game series? And I understand all the travel nonsense, but but why would you only play one game? Dude, the worst team in baseball, the worst team in baseball, still won 52 times. You know what I mean? Like, the worst team in baseball still won 52 times because any baseball team can beat any baseball team one time. You don't determine who the better team is by one game in baseball. It's not how it works. So I do, it makes, I don't know. It makes no sense. Listen, the Dodgers could win tonight and Dodger fans could be really happy. But but if they lose, you will hear Dodger fans whine and cry. The same way you're probably going to hear Yankee fans all day today whining and crying that it's just not fair and it just doesn't make sense. Browner, what do you think? I think it's dumb. I think they're hurting the sport. I think what they did, what they stumbled on last year was great for them. It allowed more fan bases to be active within the sport for a longer period of time. I don't know why they just couldn't extend that to this year. A lot of people give the NBA a hard time for having, quote unquote, too many playoff teams. Even a one game playoff in the NBA, if the better team loses, you play another game because they want the better teams to, to go forward. A one game format does nothing for baseball. Zero. So now your, your largest market is out of the viewing for postseason baseball. And if the Dodgers lose tonight, the second largest or the second most important market is now out of the window for baseball. And you got St. Louis playing. Like, I get it. They want to always be traditionalists in baseball. But at some point, they have to step back and look at the landscape of their sport. It's becoming a declining sport. Your well, best players aren't seen. Like, yeah. everybody loves Otani, right? Everybody loves Otani. Where, where is Otani? Where is Tatis? Where's Vladimir Guerrero Jr.? Where's Bryce Harper? Well, like, well, where, well, those how many people would are complain? making it into the playoffs anyway? I mean, not based on their, their final record. That's where I was going. To say. How many people would complain if you shorten regular and expand playoff? Yeah, that's uh, a great 162 question. regular season games for a span. What is it? April, March till September? Like, that's a long, long season with a lot, lot of games that most games people don't care about. Yeah. Right. People well, the owners don't care. care about most games. Right. But... I don't. I, 
like what is what is the what is the honest issue that owners could have by giving a three game series where the one the one wild card team with the most wins hosts all three like they did last year? Well, let's let's take a look at the the pitching matchup tonight. Just take a look at it because I know Dodger fans are feeling really confident. Uh, Max Scherzer since joining the Dodgers, the Dodgers won eleven games where Scherzer pitched. I think eleven and zero. And um, even though he wasn't great at the very end, they still found ways to win games that he started. On the other hand, Wainwright. I mean, he's had another monster year, and he's 40 years old, and he's signed to another one-year deal. 17-7 and seven for Wainwright on the year, 3.05 ERA, 174 strikeouts. On the other side, you got Scherzer 15-4 and four on the season, a 2.46 ERA, and 236 strikeouts. So you've got a real veteran pitcher's duel tonight. Guys who've been in these kinds of situations understand the pressure of the moment, the big stage that they're playing on. Make a prediction right now. Let's hustle it up. Make a prediction. Who you got tonight? Curse of the Red, Cardinals win. Browner? I, I hope the Cardinals win so this whole thing gets blown up. I have to admit, I kind of agree. I'm hoping that the Cardinals win for that reason. But on the other hand, the Dodgers, they got so many injuries. Like, just recently, Kershaw, Muncie. What? So there's kind of a part of me. It's like, let's see these guys persevere yet again. So, all right, stick around. We got a lot more to get to. Let's talk about what's happening tomorrow. Thursday night football, Rams and Seahawks. We'll get there next. We're in the Seven Mile Casino studio. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Pete Gray here, inviting you to catch my show, Let's Talk Hookup, every Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Time. For over 30 years, we've been the voice of the fishing community for Southern California and so glad to be back on the big stick. The all-new and mightier 1090. SDCCU is an engaged community partner. Each year, SDCCU is proud to support many nonprofit organizations throughout Southern California. Our partnerships allow us to help shape the financial lives of many through volunteerism, financial support, and creating public awareness. The result is a big impact on the communities we serve. SDCCU, it's not big bank banking, it's better. Federally insured by NCUA. Find out more at sdccu.com. Great things can be achieved when a community comes together. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Watch Doing More Sunday night at 6 on Your View or stream it online at yourview.com. Join the Walk for Alls at Balboa Park on October 16th. Every dollar raised stays local to help San Diegans with dementia. Register at alzsd.org slash walk. This year, Jobtoberfest is Wednesday, October 13th. It's the largest annual job fair in San Diego County for people with disabilities. Goodwill is one of our major sponsors. Goodwill San Diego is proud of our ongoing participation with Jobtoberfest. As an employer of people with disabilities, we recognize the tremendous value they add to the workplace and the importance paid work makes in their lives. Together, we are making good happen. Up to 30% of COVID-19 patients become long haulers with persistent symptoms months after the infection. What I've been finding with my patients is that it's taking up to three to six months for them to recover their endurance exercise capacity and get them back to work or to their usual activities of daily living. What I wasn't able to do was the basic needs like brush your teeth, take a shower because of the shortness of breath, the tightness in my chest. Uh, the symptoms that concern me the most, the shortness of breath, so restrictive. You know, you go through and you just take for granted that, you know, you're gonna breathe. And when that gets taken away, it's a scary thought. Unfortunately, I'm six months out now from my diagnosis and I'm still suffering from several of the, of the symptoms. My experience with the patients I've sent to La Mesa Rehab has been extremely positive. The patients come back with good reports, and when I see them in the office, their exercise capacity has improved dramatically. I'm getting there because of La Mesa Rehab. Teatro means theater in Spanish, and in Portuguese, and in Tagalog, and in Italian, and in so many languages. We have a lot of communities, a lot of culture here, so that is the reason why 
Teatro is in the name. The mission of Teatro San Diego is to provide arts education to underserved communities, specifically in schools. Our goal is also in tandem with arts education to provide a professional theater company and dance company so that the community can see themselves reflected on stage at the professional level. Places like Subaru have really been so supportive and have helped us come up with projects like the AMI project. I was so honored to be at an event a few days ago and heard some of the songs from it. These guys rock. This is just an amazing thing that everyone needs to see. We're here every day, 24-7. Giving you only the finest handcrafted sports talk programming you're going to find anywhere. And we never stop. Fanatic is such a mean word. We prefer committed. This is the Mightier 1090 AM. Let's talk about a scary word, dementia. Getting lost, even in familiar places, is common in people with dementia, and it can be life-threatening. You can reduce the risk by moving keys and shoes away from the front door. Call 911 immediately if someone with memory loss wanders. For free support, contact Alzheimer's San Diego, 858-492-4400 or alzsd.org. This year, Jobtoberfest is Wednesday, October 13th. It's the largest annual job fair in San Diego County for people with disabilities. Let's hear from one of our major sponsors. At Marsty, we recognize the value that individuals with disabilities, as well as those in recovery from substance use, can bring to the workforce, especially to those who want to or are currently counseling those with disabilities and substance use disorder. Marsty is proud to partner with Jobtoberfest. Nothing about the last year was normal, but you weathered it with grace, ingenuity, and creativity. In empty classrooms and full Zooms, you kept it together when we were apart. For all that you are, for all that you do, we salute you. Salute to Teachers is proudly sponsored by these charitable companies. Here's Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60 second time out with Haley Stasiak. The San Diego Loyal shut out the LA Galaxy 2 on Saturday, 3 to nothing. With the win, the Loyal completed a serious sweep of the Galaxy. The three points they earned helped boost them six points ahead of Orange County SC for second place in the Pacific Division. Elijah Martin earned Team Man of the Match honors for scoring his first goal with the Loyal. Josh Yarrow earned his second USLChampionship.com Team of the Week honor after scoring his second goal of the season to get things started for the Loyal in the win. He also completed 62 of 67 passes while winning three of four duels and made five recoveries defensively. Charlie Adams scored the Loyal's third goal on a penalty kick in the 82nd minute. The Loyal are now home for their next two matches. This Saturday, they'll be taking on Sacramento Republic FC. Tune in right here on your view. That's your 60 second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60 second timeout is presented by your view. Here it comes, Jalen Johnson. Three touchdowns on the night. Watch out. And brought down right at the line of scrimmage to the end zone. Christakos pulls it in. What a catch! Over the middle, right there. In they throw down towards the end zone. It's dry. Touchdown, Tunnel. Thibodeau breaks another tackle. Big run up the middle. Touchdown. Guerrero Stadium in San Diego. It has been a sellout the last few days. Royal LC ready to kick off this season. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight. 
powered by the mightier 1090 in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. It is a Wednesday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. I am super stoked as we welcome you back inside the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Adrian Gonzalez is getting ready to join us, and you know my affection for Adrian Gonzalez, okay? And, you know, here's a guy from San Diego, East Lake High School, who becomes a great Padre player, and that was a different generation of Padres baseball where they couldn't afford a player like Adrian Gonzalez. He winds up going on, continues his brilliant career, uh, with the Dodgers. And, uh, and when it's done, this is the last time we talked to Adrian. He's like, I'm going to go play for the Olympic baseball team in Mexico. And he went to Guadalajara. He played pro baseball in Mexico. He went and represented Mexico over in Japan. He came back and continued playing the remainder of the season in Mexico. And now I suspect we find him back in San Diego, or maybe he's in LA. Let's find out. Adrian Gonzalez returns to Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. AG, how are you, man? I'm doing good, Scott. How are you doing? Doing really, really well. Where are you today? Good to talk to you. Uh, I'm here in L.A. The girls are in school, uh, back in school in person. So uh, we're in L.A., and uh, but good to be back. Uh, you know, the, the, the summer experience playing in Mexico and, and going to the Olympics was amazing. Um, had a great time. Uh, we, we, we got to what would be equivalent of the league championship series with Guadalajara, a, fran a new franchise. Um, you know, not expected to win at all, obviously, when you're a brand new franchise. And uh, we over exceeded every expectation. Uh, we broke some records, had the highest winning percentage ever in the Mexican Summer League. Um, and, you know, we're really close to going to the finals. Uh, Tijuana beat us and they ended up winning the whole thing. So, um, but it was a great experience and the Olympics were amazing as well. Adrian, the um, professional baseball league that you played in in Mexico, what would you compare it to in the U.S.? Is it a is it double A, triple A, is Major League Baseball? How, how would you compare it so we understand? Um, it, I would say it's triple A. Uh, you know, this year specifically, um, everybody said that it was uh, the 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 competition was a lot better. Um, it's it's kind of hard to com to compare to double A because double A is a lot of like young prospects in, in you know in the, in the U.S. where triple A is a little bit older, experienced guys that that maybe have been around up and down. Um, it's more of a, that experience feel um, and the talent level of like double A, triple A. Maybe you could call it like a you know you know two A or or three B or something like that. Um, kind of like a tweener. Uh, a lot of guys that were in triple A last year or the previous years because of the minor leagues got, got cut back and there's a lot less minor league teams. A lot of those players are playing in that league now. So um, it re had really, really good competition. And it was, it was pretty much triple A. I followed you the entire time on all the different social platforms. And, you know, I loved seeing you hit home runs or uh, you just, just kind of documenting your experience in your opinion and, and, you know, your analysis of your game, would it have transferred? In other words, you just played, I don't know, how many baseball games? Did you play 100 games, 65, 75 games between the Olympics I, and Guadalajara? I played a total of probably around uh, 70. No, actually, I got I got close to, closer to 100 with the playoffs. Yeah, so because the season was 60. I played in about 48 of those. I played the three games in the Olympics with a couple exhibition games. Um, and then the playoffs were... Geez, another 20 some, 20 something and spring training, you know, you, you, you put it all together. It was close to hundred. So if you would have had, let's just say, I'll, I'll pick a number here, 350 at bats. Um, you, you probably got yourself into really good baseball shape. Yeah. Just curious. Yeah. Just curious. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think right now you could still play major league baseball? Um, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, obviously you feel, you know, I was able, I was able to cover 98 mile hour fastballs, you know, in the, in the Mexican league, I was able to cover, you know, good pitches. Obviously none of these were major league pitchers. Um, there's a lot of pitchers that pitch in the big leagues, um, you know, but uh, it's one of those things where you, as a person, as a competitor, you always feel like you can do it. Um, you know, I, I feel like my last experience with the Mets, I was coming off a, a bad injury, um, getting healthy, made it had a lot of mechanical issues. Um, you know, can I compete? I can, I can probably compete. Can I do it on a, at a high level? 
probably not. Uh, could I could I go up there and hit against right-handed pitchers? Um, probably I could go out there and, and and drive in some runs and 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 do the things that some of the things that I was able to do before. I mean, I hit a, a couple 450-foot home runs, so the power's still there, but it's, it's not something that I'm I'm trying I'm trying to see if I can do or trying to go out there and and, and prepare for a major league job. I mean, did you play first uh, today for the Dodgers? They need a first baseman tonight. Right. Max Muncy got hurt. So if the Dodgers (laughs) said to you, Adrian, we need you to play first base tonight. Who do I got a better shot with Adrian Gonzalez or Albert Pujols? Um, I would say, you you know, you stick with Albert Pujols right now. He's out there playing and, uh, (laughs) you know, you don't, uh, you don't, you you don't bring a bum off the bench, off off the streets. Get out of here. A bum. All right. I'll throw it to you this way. You ready? Um, I got to make a decision what I should do at first base. Should I keep Eric Hosmer at first base or should I use Adrian Gonzalez at first base? What do we think about that one? Um, yeah, I think, I think, I think Haas has, uh, has had, a, has had some good, good, good years there in San Diego. So, um, you know, he's, he's, he's still a guy that, uh, that, that can produce for that team. So, um, you know, right now at this moment, I, I would just stick with Hosmer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Adrian Gonzalez is here. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, kind of saying the right things, if you will, let me ask you, <laughs> get, let me get your opinion on something. Um, and, and I want to make sure we get to the Dodgers and the, and the Cardinals, but, you watched the Padres all season long, right? You saw them yeah. fall apart the way they did. Um, curious. They haven't made a move yet in terms of Jace Tingler, although everybody says it's inevitable he's going to get fired. What's your opinion of the Padres situation? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I thought I heard that he got fired. Maybe it was just a rumor. Um, you know, I, it's one of those things where I don't, I don't know what, where the decisions are coming from. The one thing that, that always made me scratch my head it was Adam Frazier. Um, he, some days he was hitting first, some say, say he was hitting eighth, some days he was hitting fourth, you, you know, and it was one of those things where I was like, this is probably the best two hitter in, the, in, in all of baseball and you're moving him around like crazy. Um, you know, little, little things like that, that I was like, man, if, if, if they had a steady lineup, everybody knew their role. Um, I think it would be a little more, cons- there would be more consistent, especially in the offensive side. When you watch that team kind of fizzle out at the end, basically culminating with an argument between your two best players as a veteran who literally just finished playing baseball, regardless of the level, it was high level and had so much time in the major league, so many clubhouses you've been in so many different personalities, different managers. At what point do you think someone would have intervened to stop it from getting to that? You know, um, my first, my first thing would always be like, Hey guys, take it inside. So the cameras aren't around because, you know, the expressions could, could tell a lot of different, different stories that, and people would come up with their own stories. I mean, you've seen all the memes that people come up with. Right. So a lot of times it's, it's just, it's just a discussion. It's not really an argument, but people can get, you know, excited. Like I remember, you know, Jassiel Puig when me and him would be, would be actually like laughing or, or having like a, a joking conversation, but we would get very expressive with our things and people would th- think we were arguing. So obviously, you know, in, in that moment, they were, you know, discussing a specific issue. Um, but the expressions can be taken out of context sometimes. So especially when you, when you capture it in a picture. Um, so for me, I would have, uh, first thing I, I, I would say is like, Hey guys, take it and take it underneath, like just right away. And they would right away understand and catch it and be like, and walk down the stairs into the, into the, into the tunnel and have that conversation behind, behind, uh, you know, behind closed doors. Um, but in the moment, I mean, you, you gotta let the, the, those things happen also in the moment because sometimes they are necessary. Obviously I wasn't there, so I don't know if this one was necessary, but you know, they can be necessary. As a manager, let's put yourself in not this particular team, but in the shoes of a manager, you would let that happen in your dugout. I would say, tell him to take it underneath for sure. I, I, I would, I would, I would let the actual conversation uh, or argument or however you want to call it, depending on what it exactly was, happen. But I would tell him to take it underneath. Adrian Gonzalez is here. It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Do you have interest in managing? Um, yeah, I mean, there, you know, the, the, the interest in managing the right team is always there. Um, you know, I mean, if, if somebody called me for, for a job and, you know, and, and somewhere where it's, it's not, you know, the specific team or, or, or organization that I would want to do it for. Yeah. I, I, I'd probably pass, but for the right team and the right organization, I'd definitely do it. All right. Hypothetical. I'm throwing it at you. Come on. Let's put you on the spot here. Hypothetical. Let's say the Padres do part ways with Jace Tingler. 
would you want to at least throw your name in as a potential candidate to become the manager? And by the way, do you feel confident that you can easily transition from great player into managing a major league ball club? Um, yeah, I would definitely tell, uh, you know, talk to Boxy, my agent and say, Hey, you know, talk to the, talk to the organization and see if there's any, any interest on their end. Um, I feel like it can definitely, you know, manage a, a major league team. Um, obviously there's a lot more to managing a team than just managing the team. There's managing minor leagues and, and different, uh, but I've been around the game long enough. I know I understand all, all that part of it. Um, I feel like, you know, I would definitely be a player's manager and, uh, and do a lot of things that, uh, could motivate the players. Um, you know, I might, I might not be the, the, the new school mentality. I might, I might bring up a bunch of trick old school tricks up my sleeve and, and, and manage a little more in the old school ways, but, um, I would definitely, uh, throw my name into, in, into the conversation. Could someone like yourself who has an old school player mentality, could you work with a general manager? I'm using AJ Preller as a specific example, could you work with a general manager who is a new school analytics based sort of philosophy? Could you do it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you need, you need the new school information, right? You need, you need it. It's, it's, it's very important. It's, it's a very important and, and really, you know, think part of the game now that, that, it, that is, there's a lot of great information there and you have to be able to, to use it. I mean, if, if somebody says no, then, then they're just, you know, close-minded um i think uh, all that information is extremely useful i think uh, i think all, all that uh you put it in with a little bit of the old school mentality i mean i still believe in in, in moving a runner over you know I, I think scoring a first run in the game is very important uh you know i, I know that new school well new school way if you get a runner on second and no outs uh you you just try to keep swinging and try to hitting the two-run homer but i still believe early in the game first three innings if it's a zero zero game you bring that first first run in because uh, teams that have a, a lead in the first three innings win like 70% of the game. So uh, little things like that, I would definitely, you know, bring the old school thought into, you know, get them over, get them in, whether it's through a bunt or just sacrificing your, your at-bat to hitting that, that that ball to up the middle the other way, but, um, or to the right side. So, I mean, little things like that, I think I, I would still be very, very strong about, um, you know, because when you're facing really good pitching, like, you know, the National League West has, uh, you got to be able to get those runs in. If you don't get those runs in, you're not going to win games. Hey, Adrian, you played with, you played under Don Mattingly in, in, with the Dodgers. Um, here in San Diego, we have this perception that A.J. Preller manages the ball club as well. He sets the lineups. That could maybe answer your Adam Frazier question, right? Your analytical way of thinking. Um, what is the dynamic between a GM and a manager in a major league clubhouse? Because we all assume that the GM might have more say in certain situations than others especially a first year coach who's never managed before like Jay Singler. But when you have someone like Don Mattingly as your, as your manager, I know it's changed there now in, in LA, but what is that dynamic between the GM and a manager? Um, the dynamic should be, in my opinion, the GM brings the players and the mat and the manager manages the players he has in the clubhouse. Uh, he manages the clubhouse. He manages, you know, the in-game stuff. Obviously he's going to take every, every suggestion, um, every idea, every, you know, piece of information uh, in, into consideration when, when those decisions are made. But the minute that the decision is made from, or the, or the lineup or, you know, any, any decisions is made from up top at that point, you might as well, you know, give him, you know, sign your resignation because then you're not managing. You're just, you're just a pawn in, 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 in the whole scheme of things. And, right. and you're just there to take the fall when the team doesn't do well. So, right. You, that's uh, that's what I perceive. I mean, I perceive Jace Tingler as a babysitter. That yeah. that that the, everything comes from up top. This is who you start. This is where they they hit. Uh, this is what you're doing tonight. And Tingler's the guy in uniform, and Preller's the guy upstairs making the decisions. I mean, that's my perception. What do you think? Well, that's the thing. I mean, we, you know, we've seen that happen over the last you know five years, where you know they have a a, a person that's that's the so-called manager, but he's just really there to take the fall when the team doesn't do well because the person up top doesn't want to take the responsibility of of, of saying that it's his his decision and that's why they lost. So, um, obviously, you know, if, if that was what was presented to me, I would de de definitely not take the the role because you know you got to let a manager manage, you got to let a GM you know, put the team together. I don't think a manager should, should step in and, and tell the, tell the GM what to do and how, what players to bring in. 
um, you know, you, you work, you work as a team and, 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 you know, you, you, you let each other do, do their job. And obviously, like I said, you take in every suggestion and every, every piece of information and you make those decisions based on that, but you got to let the manager manage and you got to let the GM be the GM and everybody, you know, everybody have their, their role in a sense. Are you willing to work your way up through an organization or are you looking to just start as the manager of a big league ball club? Are you willing to go through the minor league situation or be a bench coach or, or be a first base coach to get to the manager or like, what's your path? What's your path? Like I would consider anything. Um, you know, I, I know that now nowadays you've got a guy like Rocco Baldelli that, that, that went straight to managing. You got a guy like David Ross that went straight to managing. Uh, you, you, you've Brad seen Osmus these guys before that. Brad asked me, you've seen these guys be successful going right into managing. So, um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not saying that, uh, managing is, is oh, it's the big leagues or nothing. Um, but uh, you've seen it happen and you've seen guys be successful in that role in that, in that situation. So, um, the closer you are to the players nowadays, the better you're going to have that, that clubhouse, uh, you know, on your side. Why would you do that? In other words, you made so much money. I don't mean to count your money, but you made so much money as a player. You've been such a great businessman and investor and entrepreneur outside of baseball. Why would you ever put yourself in that situation where you'd, you'd have 162 games plus spring training, possibly postseason? I mean, why would you want to do that? I, I just perceive that if I made the kind of money that you made as a baseball player, I'd be retired right now and <laughs> you know, living off my fortune and spending time with my family and traveling and doing whatever I want to do, I'd have freedom. Why would you ever want to do that? Um, you know, I think, I think we're all competitors, right. And, and, and I mean, you know, people always talk to me about baseball and, um, even when I went to, to go play this summer, I mean, I was, I was teaching, I was coaching. I was, I was, I was, you know, you just love the part of teaching, coaching strategy. You know, we grew up in this game and we love this game and it's not about money. It's not about, anything else other than the love of the game. And, uh, and when you've done it your whole life, it's, it's, it's something that comes easy to you. Um, you know, I can see a situation and say, you know, this, 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 this is going to happen. I remember when I was, when I was, uh, when I was young and then I was with the Padres and, and we would be sitting there and Greg Maddox would be like, Hey, if this guy throws in this and the guy swings, this is the result. And then sure enough, that would happen. And as a veteran, I found myself doing that as well. So it's it's just when you're when you're in, in in the game and you know the game and you understand the game and you understand situations, and you understand what the pitchers got and what the hitters got and his swing versus his pitchings, you know his pitches. You you already see the result coming before it happens. So, um, right, well, you know, well, in our well, life. So okay, Adrian Gonzalez is here. Uh, we've talked a lot about the Padres, the potential to manage, et cetera, et cetera. Adrian, take us uh, g give us some thoughts here on tonight. You got the Dodgers and St. Louis. First question would be, what do you think of this one game wild card? And then the second question would be, who do you like tonight? First question, what I think of it, I think it's fine. I, I like it. I mean, you know, puts an incentive to win the to to win because win the division. Because if you don't win the division, then you know you're you're in a one game where anything could happen. Uh, that follows into the second question is you know, the answer to that is anything could happen. Obviously I like Scherzer. I like the Dodgers. I like their lineup, even without Muncy. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an incredible lineup. Um, you know, you have Scherzer, probably the best pitcher in, in, in the national league, maybe in baseball this year, uh, been an incredible pitcher his whole career. Um, you, you like him in that one game, but you, the one thing you can never discount is Yadier Molina and Adam Wainwright on the other side, executing a game plan and seeing, um, you know, this is, this is a little bit going back to the old school ways where the old school ways, I feel if it's executed well, will always be the new school mentality of, you know, I don't know, yesterday I saw Anthony Rizzo leading off. I mean, that was one of, another one of those head scratches where you're like, what's going on here? Why is Anthony Rizzo leading off the game? You know, um, Adam Wainer goes out there and executes, executes, executes his pitches. You got Yachty behind the plate and you got a, a, a you know, lineup in St. Louis that's really good as well. Um, you know, do the Cardinals have a chance to win? Absolutely. Um, I like the Dodgers. I think they're going to win. I'm, I'm rooting for the Dodgers, but, um, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, anything can happen because it's a one game playoff. Adrian Gonzalez is here. We got about a minute and a half to go. Hey, I want to make sure that we promote this while everybody's listening and watching. Adrian has an app 
that everybody can download. It's called Titan 23. I've been, this is how I followed you all summer, by the way, yeah. in Mexico, is following you on your own app uh, where Adrian, by the way, one of my favorite things is I saw the picture of you and Oscar De La Hoya the other day uh, at George Lopez's charity golf tournament, which I thought was awesome. How was that? Was it fun? Yeah, it was a big old party. <laughs> I, I bet. I bet. Yeah, George is around. You're going you're gonna to have a good laugh. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the app is called Titan 23 and you can download it. And this is how you follow Adrian. I mean, just like if you're an Adrian Gonzalez fan, it's about his personal life. It's about his professional life. It's about products that he's involved with. Um, it's really awesome. And the app is beautiful. I mean, it, it just works perfectly. So, uh, everybody should download Titan 23. If you're an Adrian Gonzalez fan, Adrian, can we have you back during the playoffs? Can we have, can we talk baseball yeah. as the postseason continues on? Absolutely. All right, yeah, let's, let's do, do that. that. Let's do that for yeah, sure. He's not a manager somewhere by then. <laughs> e e e even if that is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Well, listen, I'm, here's, my, here's my dream. You ready? You become the manager of the Padres. Your bench coach is Mark Loretta. You know, uh, maybe we get Phil Nevin to coach first base. You know, we need a little fire on that, that, that uh, coaching staff. Not third after last night. Woof. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll have like maybe we'll have Trevor Hoffman be the uh, the the bullpen coach or something. I don't know, man. I, I have this dream of that, putting the team uh, together. I, I mean, you know, you, you're naming off a bunch of great 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 people. First of all, first and foremost, uh, you know, all, all great Padres, but you cannot have Trevor Hoffman be a bullpen coach. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just I'm trying sorry. to put a staff together. Know, Adrian, we got we got to hustle. Enjoy the game tonight. We'll talk to you soon, man. Thank you. <laughs> all right, all right. Have a good one. Thank We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. We don't ask a lot from you. Just 16 measly hours a day. That's it. Buy some earbuds. Listen at work, in meetings, on the way home, talking to the wife, or helping the kids with homework. They'll admire your stick to itiveness. This is the mightier 1090 AM. Great things can be achieved when a community comes together. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Watch Doing More, Sunday night at 6 on Your View, or stream it online at yourview.com. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. This year, Jobtoberfest is Wednesday, October 13th. It's the largest annual job fair in San Diego County for people with disabilities. CAES is one of our major sponsors. CASE is excited to be a partner of this year's Jobtoberfest. At CASE, we believe that our people are our most important asset and value the talent that individuals with disabilities bring to our organization. Join our team and launch your career at CASE. Hope to see you there. Nothing about the last year was normal, but you weathered it with grace, ingenuity, and creativity. In empty classrooms and full Zooms, you kept it together when we were apart. For all that you are, for all that you do, we salute you. Salute to Teachers is proudly sponsored by these charitable companies. Here's Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60-second timeout with Haley Stasiak. San Diego Loyal shut out the LA Galaxy 2 on Saturday, 3 to nothing. With the win, the Loyal completed a series sweep of the Galaxy. The three points they earned helped boost them six points ahead of Orange County SC for second place in the Pacific Division. Elijah Martin earned Team Man of the Match honors for scoring his first goal with the Loyal. Josh Yarrow earned his second USLChampionship.com Team of the Week honor after scoring his second goal of the season to get things started for the Loyal in the win. He also completed 62 of 67 passes while winning three of four duels and made five recoveries defensively. Charlie Adams scored the Loyal's third goal on a penalty kick in the 82nd minute. The Loyal are now home for their next two matches. 
This Saturday, they'll be taking on Sacramento Republic FC. Tune in right here on your view. That's your 60 second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60 second timeout is presented by your view. From fitness to medical technology, explore how people are leading healthier lives on your health. Join Erica Cardenas as she introduces you to health experts and discover how our daily choices affect our well-being. Plus, learn simple tips for a healthier living. Your health, Sunday at 4.30 p.m. on Your View and yourview.com. Brought to you by La Mesa Rehab, improving the lives of those afflicted by chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Learn more at lamesarehab.com. COVID vaccines are safe, convenient, and free, and they are effective at protecting you against the coronavirus. I'm Dr. Akila Weber, a pediatric gynecologist and state assembly member, and I got the vaccine to protect my family. There is light at the end of the tunnel, and everyone who receives the vaccine helps us get one step closer to returning to normal. Go get your vaccine today. Visit myturn.ca.gov to find a site near you. Do it for yourself, your family, and for our community. Live soccer is back. Watch Orange County Soccer Club, OC's highest level of professional soccer, live on your view. Watch Orange County SC take on the Phoenix Rising FC, Wednesday, October 13th at 7. Watch world-class players and future stars. Transform your summer with a new family game night and outdoor fun all season long. Live soccer is back. Orange County SC versus the Phoenix Rising FC, Wednesday, October 13th at 7 on Your View. At La Jolla Cosmetic, we try to help people achieve well-being. And we feel that it's not only important to look good, but also feel good inside. And Honestly, what a better opportunity to help my community than being a supporter of an organization such as Las Patronas. The mission of Las Patronas is to provide financial assistance to local nonprofits that are providing valuable community services in the areas of health, education, social services, and cultural arts. La Jolla Cosmetic has been one of our biggest supporters at Las Patronas, so we couldn't do what we do without their support. You feel the need and you see the need because we go to visit each uh, grant applicant. Partnering with groups that are actually dedicated to help your community, it's the best thing that you can do as a responsible business. Shelter to Soldier is nine years young with a mission to save lives two at a time. We're adopting dogs from local shelters, training them for post 9-11 combat veterans, and we're able to donate these trained dogs to deserving veterans in need. You know, I was in a very dark place. Um, I was having suicidal thoughts, and I really needed an immediate help. We don't know if tomorrow is gonna be there for us. Shelter to Soldier is a nonprofit, and we're able to do the work that we do because of you, the community. Uh, whether it's an individual donating $5, or whether it's a corporate donor like the Barnes Firm that's supporting us and sponsoring multiple dogs that are going to make an impact in the veterans' lives in need. Him by my side 24-7 has completely turned my life around. It's not just saving both of our lives. It has made an impact on myself, Nigel, my family, my work. Uh, so yes, they definitely have saved our lives. Kaplan Accrued tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Save the Stork is an organization that equips pregnancy resource centers across the nation so that these pregnancy resource centers can reach more women facing unplanned pregnancies and provide them with holistic care, compassionate choices, and just an abundance of resources to support their decision to choose life. 
Safe District has been around for about 10 years. Uh, most people know us by our stork buses. A stork bus is a mobile medical unit that's equipped with the state-of-the-art medical equipment as well as very knowledgeable and experienced medical professionals. The buses enable them to reach areas where maybe there's not a, um, a pregnancy care center nearby. We are here to walk this journey with you so that you're not alone and to help you find your heart in all of this. And that means um, and that you're going to make a choice that is truly going to be something that years from now you're going to be proud of. Attention all dogs, cats, horses, tortoises, birds, pigs, and all other pets. Get your family members to sit, stay, and watch Animal Zone every Saturday at 9 p.m. right here on this channel and at AnimalZone.org. Tune in Saturdays at 9 p.m. to watch Animal Zone right here on Your View. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk.